Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Get up in here. Get up in here. Have a seat because this is going to be juicy and delicious. I am talking to you all about friends with benefits, people who cannot attract people who want to commit. My dog is coughing in the background. You okay, buddy? My little sweetie bee. Yes, so how many people out there stumbled across this video? Comment, comment below. Let me know where you're coming in from. Where in the world are you? Where are you? Non-committal people, it is a thing, it is a thing. One would think that in this time of COVID-19, people, you know, had some time to be with themselves, a lot of time to be by themselves, introspective, one would think people want a commitment, a connection, but no. Some people do, some people still do not. This particular letter that came to me, which you can fill out your own love life assessment over at lovequestcoaching.com. That's lovequestcoaching.com. You can fill out a free assessment. One came through and I wanted to share it with you guys because it is hot, crazy. Something that a lot of people can absolutely relate to. So let's dive right in, right in. This is a person, 49 years old. And she says, I ask these questions. Number one, what is going on with your love life currently? She says, I left my daughter's dad two years ago, Lisa. It was a miserable relationship. We had no intimacy or friendship. He made me anxious and I always felt on edge around him. So she left. I was ready to date last year and spent the year on various dating apps. I found the experience frustrating and hurtful. I seemed to attract men who had no intention of dating or being in relationships, but just wanted sex or endless texts to nowhere. Please stop that bullshit. What is that even about? I sold all of my good intentions and boundaries out just for some human connection with a couple of casual relationships. And then I felt miserable about it when they ended because the other person felt that I was too attached. Mm, that tells me she's codependent. In a full 12 months of dating, I connected with 16 men and only had two dates. The rest strung me along for weeks and weeks and then said they were too damaged to actually date or they weren't over their ex or they just wanted to have sex or share pictures with no intention of meeting anywhere for a date. And even though my profile stated that I did not want one night stands, I got so messed up that I needed to see a spiritual healer who told me to stop repeating the same mistakes and being so controlling. Let spirit guide me along and be strong without a relationship. First, as these men were not good enough for me. She was right about that. Sorry, I'm adjusting this because I need to see my screen. Okay. The problem was that I follow the law of attraction and I had my list, meaning she made the list of what you want in a partner. But I thought I had to keep putting myself out there and every time I got slapped in the face. I'm currently in a friends with benefits type of situation with a man that I like. He's spiritual, working on his issues, etc., but is not comfortable with being loved. As a natural healer, I feel drawn to give him love, but he is very focused on his work and life mission to serve others. We started off dating and then went into lockdown, and he then said that he couldn't handle the pressure of a relationship while trying to save his business. When we are together, he is very present, but he does not prioritize me at all. So what are we learning about this woman? Number one, she's clingy, she's needy, and she is 100% settling for people who are non-committal. And she's settling for scraps. No, no settling, no settling for scraps. And she is obviously not uh, satisfied and content and reveling in her solitude because she feels this like obsessive need. There's like an energy in her tone that she really craves human connection. Now I get it, right? COVID's a mofo. Look, I'm alone here 
alone. I put that in quotes because I'm never really alone. But look, I moved three weeks ago. I already have friends in my community. I already have people. I barbecued with them. I'm going stand-up paddle boarding with other people. Like, make friends. Learn how to connect with other people and build a robust life for yourself. This way, you're not a needy pain in the ass in your relationships. Let's continue. I am working on self-love and strength at the moment as I don't feel able to go back on the dating sites again. I feel that if I work on myself enough, then I will be in a better position to move on and make better choices. Wonderful, and I agree. However, you need to get rid of the friends with benefits guy if you're going to work on yourself. Because otherwise... You're coming to the universe with a split energy. You're saying to the universe, I really want to work on myself. I want to be strong on my own, but let me cling to this guy like a blanket. No, no. You got to like command it. You got to be like, all right, so listen, universe, I am wiping the bullshit off the table. I'm wiping it clean, right? All this non-committal bullshit. I'm wiping it clean so that I can get myself in alignment, I can feel good about me, and then from a good feeling place, I can open up myself to attract someone with all of the qualities that I want. And I will happily and gracefully walk away from anyone who does not share the values I share, want what I want, I'm not here to convince anyone the person that is your person, you will not have to convince them to be with you. They will want to be with you. They will be glad to be with you as much as possible. Let's continue. I ask her, what patterns do you see in your love life? What happens over and over? She says, I seem to feel the need to be chosen. Ding, 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 ding. Codependency mantra. Why is somebody going to choose me? Choose me. What's wrong with me? Honey, you want to get chosen? Choose yourself. Choose yourself every minute of every day and you will find somebody who chooses you. Why? Because they know how to choose themselves. This is codependency. This is what you hear, that language, I need to be chosen. I feel the need to be chosen. And yet, I never am in the long term. There you go. Because you don't know how to choose yourself. If you knew how to choose yourself, you wouldn't entertain a friends with benefits situation if you do not want one. I have no problem attracting men who want sex. Of course, that's what happens when you don't have boundaries and you are not choosing yourself and you're not living with integrity to what it is you want. Then yes, you're going to attract men who want only sex or to text you until oblivion and nothing will ever happen from it. And you know, I'm saying this because she's a woman, but I've heard men complain of the same thing too. Where there are men out there who are whining and dining different women and none of them seem to commit. Even though this man wants a commitment, wants something. And it goes both ways. There are plenty of women out there who are enjoying the lifestyle of being courted that they don't really have any intention on settling down with a man. And a man can really want that one-on-one -on -one companionship. So this is not just limited for, for men. It, it also is women and men and men and women. Same thing. Let's continue. I have no boundaries and I let men treat me like crap because I'm afraid to lose them. Codependency. And I go through the fear of rejection and abandonment. This is, this is the root of what this is. When you do not have self-love, then that means that you are going to care far too much about what other people think of you and you're going to take rejection really hard and really personally because you need other people to validate you. When you have self-love and you're aligned with the Almighty and you're just like, boom, I'm in alignment, I know where my worthiness comes from and it does not come from people, that's when you ooze this confidence and this like magnetic you know, feminine, like, I'm relaxed, I'm chilling, bro. Like, here's, honey, I love it. Here's the stage is yours. Tell me what you're about. Tell me what you're about, right? Show me, show me your actions, treat me good. Let's get to know each other. But you're sitting there like, honey, I don't need it. I want it, but I don't need it. What I need is peace in my life. What I need is for someone to respect me and honor me 
as they honor and respect themselves. What we see now, a lot of people not honoring and respecting themselves, and then they're looking to put that mess out into the dating marketplace. No good. So this girl, at least to her credit, is aware of her issues. She's very aware. She says, boom, I attract men who want sex. I'm confident and loving, but I have no boundaries. I let men treat me like crap because I'm afraid to lose them. And I go through fear of rejection and abandonment. So clearly there is a wounded younger version of herself who is running the show when it comes to men who is afraid of being rejected and abandoned. Now, if she and I were to hook it up and work together, and I'm gonna write her back and I'm gonna explain all these things to her in, in a letter, but if we were to work together, the number one thing that I would try to get her to do and to tre tre teach her how to do, it's a fantastic process, is to bond with that wounded version of herself and learn how to talk to it and nurture it and love it so that she is not self-abandoning. And once you do that, she's not gonna fear abandonment anymore because she's there for herself, emotionally there for herself. So this wounded version of herself, she has to see it as a separate part, a separate piece of her who is yearning for love, attention, affection, nurturing, understanding, compassion, forgiveness, all of it. I teach people how to do that, how to become this with themselves. Because a lot of people are this, they're their own worst enemy. I was that, awful, awful, horrible, lost my marriage because of it, disaster. So let's continue with Miss Jo. Amazing she is, to be so brave, to share what she shares. I attract men who are either unable to commit or who are damaged and they don't show love easily. No good. Generally, emotionally avoidant men. I have anxious attachment, so she knows her attachment style. She's anxiously attached and wants to do everything to show what a nice person I am, but I just push them away. Well, look, anxious attachment is a very repelling energy. It's a very needy, clingy, repelling energy. People are not going to warm up. There's no... There's no uh, magnetism to that it's very repelling it's like please don't leave me please don't leave me can you stay with me more can you can you tell me how wonderful i am because if you don't then i'm not going to think you like me and i just have to keep proving how great i am no that is a that's like a dog humping your leg right nobody likes the dog humping your leg you're like ah get off of me what do you like the dog who comes brings the ball drops it at your feet and looks at you like i'm cute I know I'm cute, let's play some ball. And you can't help but to throw the ball, at least a few times, the dog gets it and comes back. Not to describe anybody as a dog, but you get the point. The energy of it is what I'm talking about, that approachable magnetic energy where you're just like, damn, I wanna get to know that woman, she's amazing, like who is that? As opposed to, oh Jesus, here comes stage five clinger again. How to get to that is, Getting good with you, getting good with yourself, not needing anything outside of you to fulfill you. There are people out there who want families, who want children, who have this vision of what it is that they want, but they repel it because, they, because the energy around it is neediness. Instead of, I have a great life and I love my life and uh, I have great friends and I love my job and I love, I love everything about my life, and I'm really excited to like meet somebody amazing to share that with and you know, build a family and hang out and go on vacations and enjoy life. It's a very, very light energy. Most of the people that I hear who want those things and can't seem to attract it will say things like, my city is crap, the men are crap, the women are crap, everyone here is crap, I can't meet anybody good, I see everybody in my friends, they all have what I want, I'm never gonna have that. I think I should just give up. No, really, do you think that you're gonna attract what you want with that kind of language and mindset? You're not. I'm telling you, point blank, you're not. It's energetically impossible to attract positive when you have your eye and your mind on the negative. So, let's keep going. Three questions. What are her three questions? 
you can take this assessment too. If this is if you're like jamming out to this and you're like, dude, I need to I need to know. Go to lovequestcoaching.com tonight if you're chilling at home. Fill out the assessment form. I give you answers one on one, written out. Boom, you can print it out, take it to your like whatever. Okay. She asks, what are the next steps I should take with my love life? Learn how to love yourself. Number two, I keep reading that I need more self-love, but I feel like I do love myself. I don't have a negative critical voice in my head. Well, that's good. I do daily yoga and meditation. I love my body. I love my soul. I just don't attract men who love me. So it is, so is self-love the problem? Fantastic question. I love it. Okay, so here's the deal. You do not love yourself because you are settling. If you love yourself, you don't settle. You would not entertain a friends with benefits relationship. You would not entertain giving your body, your mind, your soul to just anybody. And you would have your vibrational match on a self-loving level so that then you would attract somebody who's wanting to commit to you. So yeah, good that you don't have a negative thing in your head and that you're positive, which is great because when I answer her back, I'm also going to add the fact that you don't have a negative critical voice in your head is actually an advantage because all you need is the uh, anxious attachment issue handled and sorted. You ba she basically needs to learn how to show up for herself. She needs to learn how to show up and nurture herself. And it's not just doing daily yoga and meditation. A lot of people think, oh, I meditate every day, yet they are not getting the answers that they need from deep within. They're disconnected. So my work with her would actually strengthen her yoga practice, strengthen her meditation practice because she would learn how to connect deeply to herself and be a disciplinarian to herself. She's got no self-discipline. So this isn't an issue of, of you know, the self-talk is critical. Self-love is not only about negative self-talk, you know, oh, you're being an asshole, you're an asshole, like calling yourself out on stuff. It's, and, and being mean and self-critical and self-judgmental and just awful. Self-love is also about the actions that you take, the decisions that you make. Is this a self-loving decision? Is sleeping with this person a self-loving decision? Will it boost me forward in my life? Will it deplete my energy? These are the questions a self-loving person asks and then takes self-loving action and doesn't just be like, okay, I'm going to sell out and I'm going to like hook up with some rando because I'm lonely. You're not going to do that. When you're self-loving, you're like, you know what? I'm really feeling lonely. So like, what can I do in my life that doesn't involve a romantic partner to quell that, to, to squish that loneliness? What, what kind of friends can I get around? Who in my family can I hang with? What kind of things can I do to nurture myself so that this feeling of loneliness has to go away? Never date from a sense of loneliness, ever. Date from a sense of fullness. My life is full. I'm busy, like all get out, and it would be awesome to share this amazing life with someone else. Live a life that is so fabulous that it would be a sin not to share it with somebody else. Do not live a life of mediocrity and boredom and loneliness and think that now that entitles you to somebody. Who wants to be around that? Ask yourself, Am I living my life right now as somebody who's a catch? Or am I living my life right now as somebody who would repel a man or a woman? Ask yourself that question and then make the necessary adjustments. You're a wonderful person. I'm not sitting here calling anybody out saying you have issues and whatever. Not a problem. No. You, everybody has their thing. Everybody's working on their thing. We're all on our journey. However, as you're working on yourself, do it from a place of joy. Do it from a place of, you know what, I have my stuff that I have to learn. I have things going on in my life all the time that I'm always looking to up level. There's another fear. There's another thing that I have to courageously, you know, handle. Always. It never ends. But primarily, I'm in a state of joy. I'm in a state of appreciation. I'm in a state of joy. I can pivot my mind to gratitude. Understanding I have so much to be grateful for every moment. There's nothing to be bitching about. And when you're in that and you take that high vibe out to the world, you end up like a magnet. You can't beat these people off with a stick. Her next question is, should I work towards going back on dating sites even though I had a very negative experience the last time? I'm a single parent and work from home, so I don't meet that many people on a daily basis. Okay, notice the split energy. 
What this woman needs to do is not date anyone until she gets her energy right. So what I would recommend she do is coach with me, I would say 45 days. She's not broken. She's not, there's nothing of this that she has to get rid of a toxic relationship. None of that. I think 45 days, knowing what I know and how I would work with her, would be sufficient um, to get her into a state of confidence, into a state of loving her life, loving herself, having boundaries, getting very clear about the kind of man that she wants, and settling for nothing that is not that. Walking away with confidence, head held high, when that is not presenting itself to her. And having a dating strategy so she is not wasting her time dicking around on these apps, having these conversations that go nowhere. I would help her hone in on three simple questions that she can ask anyone and a path, a pattern, a path for dating where you go on an app, you find somebody and you invite them into a one-on-one -on -one conversation, either through FaceTime, either through a Zoom call, whatever, and you get a sense of their energy and you get a sense of getting to know them. You can do a phone date, you can do a, a video date, get yourself a nice glass of wine, have a conversation, get food, make it like a little get together dinner on, the, on, on a video so you could get their energy and you can ask them questions and you could actually get a sense of who these people are before you even leave your house, right? This is technology, this is what we're at now. So use it to your advantage, right? If I was dating right now, it's a Friday night, okay? And I was single and I didn't have Mr. S and I was just rolling solo, I would probably line up two dates via video for tonight, one at, you know, seven o'clock, another one at nine, and just have half an hour, chat with these two dudes, see what's up, if they're a fit for me, almost like an audition, like a screening. See if the vibe is good, see if they're um, aligned with my values, where they're at, do they want a relationship, what are they, what are they about, where are they in their life right now, tell me about yourself, what do you like to do for fun? and let the conversation just flow. This is what we can do now. We have technology. You can rule the world from the palm of your hand, so do it. When it comes to online dating, it is so important to approach the online platform from a position of power, a position of confidence. You cannot be attachment, anxious attachment on a dating app, you cannot. Everything dating app is energy, everything. You see somebody, it's a reason why you, you swipe left or right. A lot of it is attraction, but it's more than that. It's the energetic attraction that the person throws off in their picture that makes you want to learn more. And if they have an energy of anxious, depressed, um, neediness, um, doom, it's gonna turn them off, it's gonna turn them off. So, my advice to this woman would be, scrap your dating apps, give it 45 days, let's work together, let's get into where that anxious attachment thing is, let's talk about the wounded version of yourself that you need to connect to and soothe and heal and create some new wiring, some new mental wiring about what you want and your likelihood of getting it, right? She's probably in her head about, you know, I only attract these kind of men, all these men all want is sex. So she's been in that, so we need to break the momentum. We need 45 days, no dating, nothing, off the apps, and start to date yourself. Start to nurture yourself. Start to be all about, what do I like? What do I want? What do I wanna do today? Where do I wanna take myself today? Is there somewhere that I wanna like go have lunch and like, do I wanna like cook something great for myself? Look, I did my manicure, my pedicure, I did it myself. Like I take care of myself like I am my one truest love, and why? In the end, people will come and go and come and go. I am with myself eternally, eternally. You are with yourself eternally. No one could, should love up on you more than you. And when you get that in here and in here, that's when the relationship comes. The relationship that you're meant to have at this juncture in your life. So how would you describe your ideal relationship? This is what she says. My ideal relationship would be a loving, committed relationship leading to marriage with an attractive spiritual partner. We would each provide a loving environment and a good communication to allow growth and security, not responsible for each other's happiness, but each working on making ourselves happy in the relationship. Love this. A lot of people have the right 
And I love asking this question because it resets the energy into what's wanted. It's very important to focus on what's wanted as opposed to what you're observing and what was in the past. You want to look at what's wanted. Focus on that as if it is happening, it is on. What do you think keeps you from having your optimal romantic partnership? Okay, so this is a this is an interesting question that I ask in my in my assessment. There's a reason why I ask it. I'm going to read you what she answered me. What do you think keeps you from having your optimal romantic partnership? And if you guys want to say in the in the comments below, what do you think is in the way of you getting your optimal relationship? What what's the barrier? What's the block? What goes on? She says I'm not meeting men who want the same thing as me. Maybe not being attracted to those men. Perhaps I'm too picky. I just don't feel attracted to that many men. Ah, okay. So now we go into something else. So this leads me to believe that she's probably attracting really good guys. You know, guys that might want to go and take her out. Guys that do want to settle down. Guys that do want a committed relationship. But physically... She's probably not attracted to them. And that's fine. That's okay. Her guy is going to want commitment and going to and she's going to find him attractive. And her thing is getting the belief or about that man existing. If you don't believe that what you want exists, you'll never have it ever. If you don't believe that that car, that that house, that that person, that that life, that that bank account exists, you'll never have it. It'll always elude you and it will lead to frustration and it'll lead to um, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy that the thing that you want the most, you can't have it. Not true. You can have, you can be, do, have, whatever, whatever. Just have to align with it. So then I said, what, um, I ask, how long was your longest relationship? What did it teach you? And if you're in your longest relationship presently, what has it taught you so far? She says 10 years with her ex. It was a rebound relationship because the one before that only wanted something casual. I didn't pick up on the red flags and I plowed on just because I wanted to be in a relationship. This is classic codependency right here. He cheated on me, but I chose to stick with it, codependent, because I was 37 and wanted a child. So you want to bring a child in with a person who dishonors you, their mother. No, this is, these are the decisions that women make in their lives from a wounded place. That decision was not made by a grown-ass 37-year-old self-loving woman. That decision was made by probably a six-year-old inner wounded child who is running her show in relationships her entire life. And this is what the problem is. This is what was the problem with me. I had this exact thing. In my marriage, I would say 90%. Solid, no, that's a little high. I'd say solid 70% of the time in my marriage, I showed up like a nine-year-old. For real, for real. Terrible. So she says, after having my daughter, he never wanted sex after that, and I crumbled with the loneliness. Why are you doing this to yourself? If you think that this person is not treating you well, is not a match for you, why would you have a baby with this person? He was controlling and I left when my daughter was seven when I finally got the confidence. So the relationship was crap for years before, three. Didn't do anything about it. Had a kid. Now it's 10 years of her life gone. So she finally gets the confidence to leave. 10 years out of her life wasted. I wish I left sooner when I was younger. In spite of the pain, I felt I feel a lot stronger for having gone through all of that. Okay, good. So she made peace with it, but yet she says in the present tense, and I look at language, honey, you can't pull shit on me because I can look at language. In spite of the pain I feel, present tense, so she still feels pain, but she's able to soothe the pain by saying that she feels a lot stronger for going through the experience, which I, I commend that, but she's still in pain. That is not good. Because if you are dating from a place of pain, you are not going to attract the right kind of pleasure. What are your personal goals? Aside from your love life, what would you like to do to improve your life? 
Love this question. Why? Because I want to get the focus off of this external relationship, this outer thing that people think that they need to have in order to be worthy. Bullshit. What do you want for you? Your goals. What are you doing for you? And the other reason that's an important question is because how do you think you're going to ascertain what kind of partner you want if you're not clear about where you're going in your own life? A lot of people are just attracting by default like feather in the wind and they're not saying I want this in my life I am going for this I am having this and here's who I'd like by my side that's all these are the types of values that I have and this is the type of person that would work best for me in my life right now so she found me oh I'm gonna answer what she said I love to write stories, so she loves to write. I have had just one published in a magazine, how fantastic, and I'm visualizing writing three books. Amazing. I also started to train to be an RTT therapist, I can't wait to qualify and help people. I'm also going to train to be a healer, not really for financial gain, but because I want to help heal animals and I want to help the people. So this chick is a very giver, helper, she's a very that, she has to be very careful because energetically people will take advantage of people like that. Um, I have an amazing relationship with my daughter. That's amazing. Blessings to that. And I work on attracting more abundance to be able to provide a better home and experiences together. Okay, so then notice what she said. Not really for financial gain. Honey, always for financial gain. Always. There's nothing wrong with inviting in the abundance of money into your life ever. The more money you have, the more experiences, the better home, the better quality of life, the more you can share with other people, the more you can help, be of service to people. Do not reject money ever, ever. Open up the floodgates and your heart to receive abundance of money, abundance of everything. You deserve it. You're worthy of it. So she had found me through a codependency summit that I participated in um, with... Um, Aviaya University and she's now following me on Instagram. So I'm super psyched that I connected with this lady and I'm hopeful that she can potentially become a client. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I felt really, once I read through her assessment form, and again, help yourself to assessment form, um, lovequestcoaching.com, that's lovequestcoaching.com. And just so you know, um, I never rat people out like I share stories I share these things but I never like tell detail about you know them it's like I never name names I only name situations so that other people can learn from it so rest assured this is you know only for learning purposes and uh, you know it's important that we all kind of you know share our stuff and be vulnerable and just be like listen a lot of her story, I found a lot of myself in her story back in the day when I, I totally resonated with me. And I said, you know, a lot of people go through this. They get really frustrated because they can't attract somebody who can commit and they don't know why. And they're like, what is it in me that, com that attracts non-committal people? And the number one question I ask is, are you fully committed to yourself? If you expect somebody to commit to you, you need to commit to yourself. And they look at me like, like, what do you mean? Well, when you say you want somebody to commit to you, then you don't get naked and do a Betty bed hop with anyone who is not interested in a relationship. And if and, and you have to declare that. You have to declare it to the universe, full on, to God, to the universe, in your prayers, and say, listen, I feel the love. I feel the love. I know my value. I know it. And I don't care. And you put... God on blast and you say God I feel the love and I am grateful for your love and your guidance and your eternal blessings but here's the deal because of that love that I know comes through me I'm gonna ask you this and this is the action that I'm gonna take I am gonna honor my body my soul and my mind for however long it takes until your divine time brings me my person that's how serious I am about finding love. That's how serious I am about finding the right kind of love, the divine kind of love, that I'm gonna turn it to you. And in the interim, I'm gonna celebrate my blessings. Thank you so much for my home. Thank you so much for my dog. Thank you for my family who loves me, my friends, my wonderful friends. Thank you for the food in my fridge. 
You go on a thank you tirade and you show God that you are all about the love, the blessings that, and what, you don't think a blessing of a person is going to come from that? Are you kidding me? Do that and you will see how you will feel better. You'll be so like um, aligned. You'll just be like, oh, I love it. I have a full plate. I am abundant. I have friends, people calling me, things to do. And you're not going to have that anxious attachment to a, a person, any one person. You're never going to have anxious attachment because your attachment is always going to be to source, God, whatever that is. Make that your anxious attachment. Don't even be anxious about it. Just be chill. Everything is cool. You are right where you're supposed to be. And you're either repelling what you want or you're opening yourself up to be a magnet to what you want. And your mindset is what determines which one you are. If you're focused on the lack of it, then lack is what you're going to get. If you're focused on the joy of it, like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to meet somebody great. It's only a matter of time. I feel awesome in my life. I'm doing all these great things. I'm hanging with great people. I'm making money. Everything's in place. Bring it on. If that's where you're at, then I mean, you can go and like, you know, run errands mm -hmm. and you'll meet somebody. Oh, but COVID, everybody's wearing masks. Nobody wants to meet. Bullshit. I am here. New town. I'm here three weeks. Already met people. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Thank you. So kind. Not wearing my mask all the time here. I wear it inside the store. Do my thing and I'm out. Okay, but when you're out and about, you're seen. People see you. Hey. Da -da. Okay. Look, the point is, when you are cool with you, honey, you can't beat them off with a stick. You got to be like, whoa. So have faith. It's all faith. It's about faith. I have so many people. Oh, I have so much faith. I'm, I'm definitely, you know, I know I'm a child of God and all this and that. And I'm like, but you don't have faith. You're religious or you were raised religious. And you're praying from a place of need and lack. You're not praying from a place of gratitude. And, and God doesn't like needy prayers. It's pathetic. God's like, dude, do you not have faith? Like, I love you. I love you so much. Like, I'll give you whatever you want. But you can't be needy about it. It's ridiculous. So, that being said, I'm Lisa the Love Coach. I have so much love for everybody out tonight. I hope you have a good Friday night. I was a little off and on with the, um, with the Facebook Lives this week because of the... Republican National Convention, people were all up in that. So, um, but I will, you know, of course, put more of these out. And if you have a topic for me, feel free to PM me on Facebook. If this is resonating with you and you have a, an issue, you want to do a session with me, I offer a really nice 90 minute, nine zero, whole hour and a half, one on one. We handle amazing things in that time, get you a lot of clarity. And, uh, you know, look, when you're ready to really commit to yourself and you go all in on the work on yourself and you invest in yourself, time, money, energy, don't you think that you're going to attract somebody who's ready to invest in you to put their commitment, their time, their energy? Number one way I ended up getting business handled, great guy in my life, I started to full on commit to myself. I put money there for me, my betterment, I put time I got with coaches, with uh, seminars, um, what else? Um, yeah, coaching, seminars, oh, um, self-care, acupuncture, um, Reiki, like all kinds. I just looked at it like build a dream team for my life. And that's where everything started to shift and change, and it always does. So now I get to do this for the people. It's so awesome. And I still always develop, and I, I'm actually... In, uh, beginning with my business coach. I start in the beginning of, of September. I'm preparing now. Set up my desk. I got everything sorted out. And why? Because I have to commit to me. I have to commit to my business, to my life, to what it is that I want to create for myself. That's how you end up finding friends and people who want to commit and show up for you. So much love to you guys. I hope this helped you out. I love you all so much. I'm Lisa the Love Coach. You can find me at Lisa the Love Coach on Instagram. And you could also find me at YouTube. You could also find me, just Google me, Lisa Concepcion, and you'll find me. I'm everywhere. Much love to you. Have a great evening. Bye.